Yep, I just have. It is. Oh, it's nothing. Oh. Well. First frame. Should Trump to break? Four years ago, they squared off in the final of the Championship League. Today, it's a clash in the early stages of Group 5 for Judd Trump and Martin Gould. Both former winners of the title. Trump, the most successful player in the tournament's history, having won three of its ten previous stagings. Gould claimed the title five years ago. Didn't take Trump long to be left a chance. Eight. Had a bit of good fortune to land on this one to the middle. Really, you'd normally expect him to pop that, but bear in mind, this is his first action of the day. No practice tables here, so going in cold, you're often going to see a few shots like that early on. Player's just not quite sharp yet. One. already played in to some extent he's just completed one match on this table beat Ricky Walden by three frames to one in a match that only finished about ten minutes ago but he hasn't made a great deal of his early opportunity either Over on the other table, they're still playing the first match of the day and could still have some way to go in it. Ben Wollaston leading Mark Williams there by two frames to one. Wollaston among the late call-ups for this group after a number of withdrawals. And they're in the early stages of frame four there. If he's not left anything on here, that's remarkable. And just that little raising of the hand there suggests that he thinks maybe he hasn't left a chance, but I think this one might go to right corner. 
Well, it did go, so I think Gould was mistaken in thinking he'd got away with that. Well, if he wasn't on that intended red to the corner, it was a poor shot, but he's recovered the situation well. And when you are just trying to play your way into the day's action, this is the sort of chance you dream of having. 16. There were practice tables here. This is probably the way you'd set the balls up on them to have a knock before going on. Trump returning to action just three days after a hugely disappointing semi-final defeat in the Masters. It's the only one of the big three events he's never been in the final of. He looked like he was going to put that right when he led Kyron Wilson 5-2. But just reached for the winning line a little too early in the next frame. And after that, he looked to me quite jittery and anxious. He was starting to fear the prospect of losing a match that he had been so close to winning. And sure enough, he did end up losing. Wilson came back to beat him 6-5 before going down to Mark Allen in the final. 38. 39. And particularly with Ronnie O'Sullivan and Mark Selby going out early on, there was a feeling that Trump might finally end his long wait to win one of Snooker's big three again. Was UK champion in 2011. 46. But he shouldn't have much more of a wait to win this frame. So this black and one more red should see him over the line.
well and truly in the bag now. Well, no century. It would have been a big ask anyway, given where the other two remaining reds were. But that break of 74, enough for Judd Trump. He's off to a promising start. He leads Martin Gould by one frame to nil. Now it looks as though Ben Wollaston is off to a winning start. There you can see, he's got this match well and truly sewn up now against Mark Williams. He was delighted to get the call, Wollaston wasn't due to come in until Group 7. But he's in as a late replacement and very often you see players coming in and really making the most of that opportunity. So the former Welsh Open runner-up. has beaten probably the greatest ever Welsh player. And it looks as though he's going to finish with a century. So Ben Wollaston, a 3-1 winner over Mark Williams. And he'll be back on the table in a couple of hours' time to play Joe Perry. Second break. Martin Gould to break. Before that, Perry himself will be starting his campaign against David Gilbert. That'll be starting in just a few minutes' time. On table two, back here on one, it's 1-0 one to Trump. Oh. <laughs> one. Well, it's not going to lead to anything more, that fluke into the middle. He's got a bit of work to do to get this safe. Obviously better for him that dropped in and didn't just stay over the pocket, at least he has some chance to play the next shot. And Try to get out of trouble. Yellow ball. And he decided the best and perhaps only way to do that was to try to pot his way out of trouble. Should and it could hardly have turned out any worse. Two of the most successful players in the history of Championship League. They've actually met six times in this tournament before, and they've had three wins apiece. But in other tournaments, Nine. it's near enough one-way traffic. Because out of ten meetings in tournaments other than Championship League, Trump has won eight. Nine. Well, that's disappointing for Gould. In among the balls. 
Good chance to respond to Trump's opening 74. In the end, he's made just nine from it. And you could probably hear Trump's reaction. He knew as soon as he hit that that it wasn't going in. mentioned Trump's very good record against Gould over the years. Well, one match that must be in both of their minds every time they meet was in the semi-finals of the World Grand Prix three years ago. Gould looked to be on his way to the final. He was 5-1 up. Trump came back to beat him 6-5 and went on to win the title. Gould does have a history of losing big matches from big leads. Famously, of course, in the second round of the World Championship in 2010. 11-5 up going into the last session against Neil Robertson, who came back to beat him and went on Nine. to become Australia's first ever World Snooker Champion. Speaking of the World Championship, Trump's well. best year there, 2011, when he came through as a qualifier, beat Neil Robertson, the defending champion, on the first day, went on to reach the final, the final he probably should have won against John Higgins, 13. and one of the players he beat along the way was Martin Gould in the second round by 13 frames to six. So Gould trying to reverse quite a bit of history against Trump today. Well, if he was trying to play onto that red at the bottom of the cluster to right corner, it wasn't a very good effort at doing so. So a very patchy start to the match from Gould. Gould well, he's caught that all wrong and this is another chance for Gould and one good shot here and you look at the way the balls are placed it could be a frame winning chance One. 
And that's just about perfect. So he'll be thinking one all now. Gould wasn't in the Masters this year. He has been a top 16 player in the past. He's a few places outside it at the moment at number 20. But if he can continue the sort of form he's been in over the last few months, it won't be long before he's back in the 16. Had a great run around about November, December. Semi-finals of the International Championship, quarter-finals in Shanghai, quarter-finals again in the UK Championship in York. When you look at the players who knocked him out of those three tournaments, Mark Selby, John Higgins, Ronnie O'Sullivan, probably three of the five greatest players of all time. This is frame ball then. It's the shot that was invented by Mark Williams about 15, 20 years ago. And he did that very casually. Most impressive. Well, it doesn't matter about that. Trump's in off, gave Gould a chance. He responded very well with that 57 and levels at one frame all. So this group five of the Championship League, we already have four players through to the winners group. Zhu Yu Long, Mark Selby, Kyron Wilson and Ali Carter. And the top four in the round robin table at the end of tomorrow afternoon will go through to the group semi-finals. The eventual group winner tomorrow night will be in the winners group. The beaten finalist and the beaten semi-finalists and the player who finishes fifth will all be back on Thursday to start group six and that's the penultimate chance to claim a place in the winners group three more new players come in and then another three in group seven including the defending champion John Higgins and then when the seven groups have been completed it's the winners group to determine the overall winner of championship league for 2018 third frame should Trump to break.
Gould has just been giving the chances away a little too easily to Trump in the early stages of this match. And the more Trump settles in and gets into his rhythm, the more he's just going to punish those. Not often you see a player playing a professional snooker match with stripes down his sleeves. It's the sort of thing you might have seen Alex Higgins wear back in the day. Seven. Eight. Well, he may have been very unlucky there. It looked as though he had a red to right middle, but it seems another one may have run into the path of that, but perhaps this one goes to the corner. No, it does. Fourteen. Obviously, the red out of commission at the moment, but nice angle here to play a little cannon and free it. So this could be a key shot in this break. Twenty. Bit surprised to hit it that hard. Although I think the black is now free into the uh, left corner. He can't get on it from here, so needs a good shot to keep this going. Well, he's played that to absolute perfection. Twenty-seven. And I think coming here is exactly what Trump really needed after his huge disappointment at the Masters on Saturday. 33. It isn't a ranking event with all the pressure that goes with that. He knows he's going to have at least six best of fives to play. I think this is really the best thing he could possibly have done, come here and play in this group. 40. One. Started off like a train in the previous group, won his first three matches without losing a frame. Tom Ford finally managed to stop his run, but only by taking one frame off him. Trump still beat him 3-1. And then because of the withdrawal of Mark Allen during that group, 48. he only had one more match to play. And Trump was beaten in that one by Barry Hawkins, but he still finished first in the table, only to then go and lose 3-0 to Ali Carter in the group semi-final. Well, that may well have been a blessing in disguise, because, as I say, I think he's much better here, playing matches and 53. getting on with it. 
rather than maybe being left all week to dwell on what happened at Alexandra Palace on Saturday afternoon. 54. Frame ball then for Trump. It was during that previous group of the Championship League that he reached the milestone of 500 career centuries. Only the sixth player ever to do that. And you wouldn't bet against him adding another one here. 76. Well, I think he feels it may have rolled off a bit, but it doesn't really matter. No century for Trump, but the 77 is enough. He wins the frame in one go. He's one away from victory now. He leads Martin Gould by two frames to one. Now let's see what's going on next door. Uh, very early stages here. Joe Perry and David Gilbert, two players who both came in as late call-ups for this group. Perry, the inaugural winner of the Championship League, ten years ago now. Only played in one group last year and only won one match and it finished bottom. And that was the end of that for him. Gilbert was a group winner last year. Beat Ryan Day to win group one, but finished second bottom of the winner's group. So we'll keep an eye on that. Frame but our main focus is here, where Martin Gould has to win this frame. Or he'll be going down to his first defeat in this group. You can really see him growing in sharpness and confidence as this match goes on. You have to say it's been a pretty good season for Trump when you look at it. 
retained the European Masters title in Belgium in October. Reached the final in Shanghai. Semi-finals of the Scottish Open. Quarter-finals of the International Championship. And outside the ranking events, he did get to the semi-final of the Masters. And yet it's been a season with some low points as well. Obviously losing from such a strong position against Kyron Wilson at the weekend was won. Very surprisingly losing the semi-final in Glasgow to Chow Yu-Peng the week before Christmas. And he was thumped 5-0 by Sam Craigie in a qualifier for one of the tournaments in China very early on in the season. Perhaps the lowest point of all, though, came in the Northern Ireland Open in the first round against Stuart Carrington when he conceded the match by smashing the Reds with his cue. He was probably going to lose anyway. He'd left a probable match-winning chance, but certainly showed an element of frustration that he did that. And only two players have earned more ranking points than him this season, so he's certainly been doing a lot right. Just a feeling that things have gone slightly more his way. Season could have been a whole lot better. And that positional shot could have been a whole lot better too. Thirty-five. He's recovered the situation now back in prime position and thinking perhaps of doing what he did in the last frame and winning it in one go Doesn't have to do anything to develop reds. There plenty available there for him to get to the winning line. 46. Usually so effective and so clinical from positions like this. 47. Well, he's finished a bit short with the cue ball there. So likely to have slightly more difficult red than he would have been expecting. So one more red and black after this black. Put him 68 in front with 67 left. And really I think the story of this match has largely been Gould giving Trump too many chances and Trump being just too good at capitalising on them. And yet there could be a late twist because he's lost the cue ball a bit there. But he was able to put everything into the pot because that was effectively match ball. 68 in front but still 67 left so could do with one more red. Again though he can put everything into the pot. 's will probably come back to the table now I think if that had gone in 68 he might well have resigned himself to defeat just the one snooker needed then 
seven. Gould considered the very risky cut to the right corner, but he knew if he missed it, there was almost certainly no way back from there. Decided the risk was too great. He still left one on from distance. I think that sums up how open Gould has been in this match, really. As I was saying, he has given Trump plenty of chances. Really shouldn't have given him a sniff of one there. Anyway, Trump didn't capitalise, so still hope for Gould. not now. Well, <laughs> can Trump find the gap? Or can he play one on to the other? Reds over the pocket like that to the untrained eye it can look quite straightforward but those shots are definitely in the category marked more difficult than it looks Two former winners of the Championship League battle on in the fourth frame here. The first ever winner of it has taken the opening frame of his campaign. Joe Perry 1-0 up against David Gilbert on the other table. pressure on this next shot which isn't a gimme because if he misses he's going to need three snookers no 
nicely done, so he battles on. Eight. Nine. It's always good in this situation to get it down to the last red. Makes it much less difficult to try to get the snooker. Well, that's one less ball for Lane Snooker's behind. Or for Lane Snooker's on, I should say. Oh, well, that's going to be the end of that now, surely, because he had to get that one. 36 behind. It's now instantly gone from one snooker required to three. Judd Trump made two centuries when he beat Martin Gould in the final of this tournament four years ago. He hasn't made any today, but it's still been a pretty accomplished Five. performance. He's had breaks of 74, 77 and 68. Nine. So, a mixed morning for Gould. He won his first match against Ricky Walden. Nine. But he's lost his second one and it's a winning start for Judd Trump. He's beaten Martin Gould by three frames to one.